Sometimes you'll be asked to factor a trinomial, which is an expression containing three terms. So in this example, we have x squared, which is one term, negative 8x, which is another term, and positive 15, which is the third term. Upon first glance, trinomials might seem unfactorable because there's no common factor. So where do you start? In order to understand how to factor trinomials, first let's review the distributive property, which is what you use when you multiply binomials. So here we have an example x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 4. Using the FOIL method, we start by multiplying the first terms. So x times x equals x squared. Next, the outside terms, x times 4, equals 4x. Next, the inside terms, 3 times x, gives you 3x. And lastly, the last two terms, which is 3 times 4, which gives us 12. Now that we've expanded, we want to simplify by collecting like terms. So the only like terms here are the 4x and 3x. Everything else will stay the same, which gives us x squared, 4x plus 3x added together gives us 7x plus 12. So what do we notice here? Well, the middle term of 7x, just looking at the 7, it's obtained by adding together the 3 and the 4 from the original binomials. Also, the last term of 12 was obtained by multiplying together the 3 and the 4 from the original binomials. This is not a coincidence. This is the idea behind figuring out how to factor trinomials. Now, working backwards from the same example, trying to factor it, we're looking for two numbers that when you add them together, they'll give you 7, which is the middle term. And when you multiply them together, they'll give you 12, which is the last term. I recommend starting by looking first for factors of 12. You can obtain 12 by multiplying together 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. Next, when you look at the sums of these numbers, 1 plus 12 gives you 13, 2 plus 6 gives you 8, and 3 plus 4 gives you 7, meaning that 3 and 4 are the correct numbers. Remember, you're looking for numbers that satisfy both parts, the sum and the product. Putting this together to start factoring, we keep the first term as is, the term with the x squared. Next, we want to change the 7x into a sum of the two numbers we found, which are 3, we put the x as well, along with 4 with the x. And finally, we leave the last term as is as well. Next, you want to proceed by factoring using the grouping method that we looked at last time. So we look at the first set of terms and then the second set of terms. So from the first set, we can factor out an x, leaving behind an x plus 3. And from the second set of terms, the common factor is a 4, leaving behind x plus 3 again. Meaning when you common factor at this stage, we're left with x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 4. Now notice in this stage that the 3 and the 4 in each factor are the numbers we found at the beginning. Essentially, when you factor trinomials, once you find out what your two numbers are that satisfy the conditions, you can go straight to this step. Alternatively, you can proceed with the long method, which is called decomposition. Let's look at another example, which is the question that was posed at the beginning of this video, x squared minus 8x plus 15. So remember, we start by looking at factors of 15 first. So 15 equals 1 times 15, and it also equals 3 times 5. However, if we look at each of these factors, 1 plus 15 will give us 16, and 3 plus 5 will give us 8. The problem here is that both of these sums are positive, and we're looking for a negative sum. One thing that you can't forget to include are the negative factors. So to get a product of positive 15, we could also multiply together negative 1 times negative 15, as well as negative 3 times negative 5. When you add these numbers together, 
negative 1 plus negative 15 will add together to give you negative 16, and negative 3 plus negative 5 will add together to give you negative 8. That means that negative 3 and negative 5 satisfy the equation. So let's write this off to the side. The sum is negative 8, the product is positive 15, and the numbers are negative 3 and negative 5. The next step in factoring is to replace the negative 8x with the two numbers we found that will add together to give you negative 8x. So that means we're keeping x squared as is, replacing 8x with negative 3x minus 5x, and again keeping the product of 15 as is. Next we factor by grouping, take a look at the first two terms, and factor out a common factor of x, and then the second two terms. The common factor here is negative 5. And finally, common factor out the x minus 3, leaving you with x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 5. Remember, we can go straight to this step because we know that the two numbers are negative 3 and negative 5. All we have to do is just keep an x in each parentheses. And this question is complete. In this next example, factoring 2x squared minus 2x minus 40, the first thing to realize is that there's a common factor. This has to be taken out first. So factor out the common factor of 2, leaving us with x squared minus 1x, or just x, minus 20. Now at this stage, we can continue with the sum and product method that I showed you earlier. So the sum is negative 1, the product is negative 20, and now we're looking for the two numbers. Let's start by listing factors of negative 20. Negative 1 times 20, negative 20 times 1, negative 2 times 10, negative 10 times 2, negative 4 times 5, and negative 5 times 4. However, when we look at the sum, the sum is negative 1. That means that the two numbers that we're using have to have a difference of 1 between them. There'll be only one number apart from each other, meaning these first four sets of numbers that we found won't work because 1 and 20 are on opposite sides of the spectrum. Same thing with 2 and 10. However, 4 and 5 are both one number away from each other. We just have to figure out which one will be correct. So if we add up the 2, negative 4 plus 5, the answer will be positive 1. If we add negative 5 plus 4, the answer will be negative 1, meaning that negative 5 and positive 4 are our two numbers. This means that we can go straight to the final answer. So we keep the common factor of 2 there, put an x in both set of parentheses, and now just include our numbers negative 5 and positive 4, and that's the final factored answer. This next example is a little bit different because we're introducing a second variable into the picture. However, let's start by doing what we know, which is to common factor. The common factor here is 5. When we take that factor out, we're left with 5 multiplied by x squared plus xy minus 12y squared. So again, we still have two variables, an x and a y, but we continue the process as normal. This means that we're going to start by looking for a sum. So the coefficient here is 1, so our sum is 1. And the coefficient here in the last term is negative 12. As with the previous example, the sum is 1, meaning that the two numbers are only going to be 1 apart. So with the product being negative 12, we can completely ignore numbers like 1 and 12 because those are more than one unit apart. Instead, we'll be looking either at negative 3 and 4 or 3 and negative 4 because 3 and 4 are only one unit apart when you're ignoring the positive and negatives. So to see which one works, negative 3 plus 4 will give us positive 1, whereas positive 3 plus negative 4 will give us negative 1, meaning that the numbers that work are negative 3 and positive 4. 
So let's continue using the long decomposition method. That means that we're replacing the xy term with the two numbers we found. So we're replacing it with plus 4xy minus 3xy and keeping the negative 12y squared as is. Next, we're going to factor by grouping, looking at each set of terms separately. Remember to keep that common factor of 5 at the front. Looking at the first two terms, we can factor out an x, so we'll change this to a square bracket, leaving us with x plus 4y factored out of that first set of terms. For the second set of terms, there's a y that's common between both, as well as a negative 3. So we'll factor out negative 3y, leaving us with x plus 4y. And just like you want in factoring by grouping, you're left with two common factors at that stage, meaning we can finish factoring. Once again, I just want to draw your attention to the fact that the two sets of parentheses at the end have the two numbers that we found at the very beginning, which are negative 3 and positive 4. The only difference in this example is that the y variable is the second term in both sets of parentheses. There are a few things to keep in mind as well as some helpful hints for when you factor trinomials. The first is to always remember to common factor first. This is crucial and this is what you should be doing anytime you're factoring is looking for a common factor. The second is that the signs in your expression will help you figure out what your numbers should be. What I mean by this is, if your sum is positive and your product is positive, that means that your numbers will also be positive. If your sum is negative but your product is still positive, that means that both numbers are going to be negative. Basically, if the product is positive, both numbers will have the same sign. In the other two cases, the product is negative, while the sum might be positive or negative. When you're trying to find two numbers that will multiply together to give you a negative answer, you're going to need one positive and one negative number in each case. When the sum is positive, that means that the larger number is going to have to be positive. However, when the sum is negative, the smaller number is going to have to be positive in order for the larger number to outweigh the effects of the smaller one and create a negative sum. This is a chart that you could just try and memorize. However, I recommend trying to understand the logic and reasoning behind it so that you don't have to worry about memorizing. It's just something that you can understand. Hopefully this helps in your quest to understanding how to factor trinomials. I'll be back next time with another lesson.